Farmers never have any days off. Growing on a farm is like different than washing dishes inside the house with your mom or cooking breakfast or taking out the trash. Hard mornings, um, waking up at five o'clock in the morning, uh, topping tobacco. So days like this where there's no sun and it's not raining, we'll be in the field from sun up to sundown. Or when it's not sunlight, we'll still be in the field until right, it gets dark. So to begin the cloning process, what I try to do is identify a good, sturdy stem to try to choose and differentiate from the rest. So for example, this particular one here has nodes on every particular family. That's how you count to understand that when you cut, you want to make sure you have a node behind it so it can regenerate itself. So what I normally do is I count the nodes. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So around the sixth node, if I decide to cut here, I know that I have one, two, three, four clones coming right behind it in two weeks. So you can see the roots. They catch on very fast. Everything is certified organic. We use uh, gap practices when creating our products. Explain what GAP practice is. GAP is good agriculture practices. So basically SOP that is created on how we take care of the plants each and every day. Clayton was born in Alexandria, Virginia. So just 20 minutes outside of Washington, DC. Um, and it was no more than eight weeks after he was born, Patrick wanted him to meet his parents. So we brought him here to the farm and he was lucky enough to be able to meet his grandparents. Um, and then after that, really, Patrick started coming here as much as he could, as much as he could. And I, that wasn't the way I saw myself spending my weekends. <laughs> Bubble Kush, Shower Space Candy, you have a marijuana version of that, and then you have an industrial hemp version of that. The cherry variety, I'm not particularly sure, but it's so many that that probably is the case. You have cherry citrus, you have cherry bee, you have cherry blossom. Um, it's just so many out there. I like cherry citrus. Yeah, a lot of people love love cherry citrus. Uh, yeah, man, this cherry bee, uh, cherry variety period is one of the most unique varieties. Um, durability, lasting long, durable, hardy, sturdy plant. The cherry citrus are very unique because the ridges are a lot different. And, and all the families. So how are they different? They're like just more rigid and it's just a more unique uh, shape. You can definitely tell the difference. But I began to understand Patrick and his responsibility. Many, many, many things, many principles I can uh, talk about it. Be, I'll, I'll take too long, but uh, developing a fair share, giving a man what he's due. Um, if a person works for you and he works hard, you, you provide him with his fair share, um, giving back to the community. That's one of the main things that my dad instilled in me and i never forget it. This clone here is about three and a half weeks old. Which is what I love to see. Our oh, yeah. friendly ladybugs. She, she takes care of all the aphids, which is, helps us continue our natural organic process. Yeah, parenting is 24-7 and at times I've gotten frustrated with Patrick because it's it's a long day. Yeah. And so we've had discussions on how we can incorporate our son into a long day. And as he's watching us, he's also learning and developing that same sense of pride in family and land. Yep. So that that was really a light bulb that went off in me and my appreciation has just skyrocketed ever since. So our main uh, growing point to help provide uh, healing through holistic research and uh, holistic medicine such as cannabis is to help alleviate pain and mitigation from customers that use harmful 
drugs and harmful prescribed medications that could cause uh, harmful side effects. The, the impact that it has on our customers' lives is, is rewarding. Like I said, starting to grow the plants, from us checking to make sure that the roots are there, that it's sprouting, making sure the color of the plant is right, it smells right, feels right. All of that goes into the care that we put into from the, gra from the time that the plant reaches the ground to the time it gets into the consumer's hand. I, I research a lot about other growers. Of course, the West Coast has, has the most knowledge of it. They've been growing it the longest. I, I research a lot of growers out there. Bruce Perlon out of Arizona is one of the growers that I love to, to watch. Hemp Incorporated out of Spring Hope, North Carolina, and they have a facility out in Arizona as well. My mother was uh, very vital to our family. Um, through her processes of science and application, she was a chemist. So she went to school for chemistry and she had a master's degree in it. So she helped my dad cure tobacco and was known as one of the best tobacco cures in the state. When I was younger, I didn't understand that why should we have to work long hours in the field in the hot sun to just give it away to people in the community. Because based on our principles as Christians, we always believe that we have to give back for the people that's less fortunate. For my father, what he used to do is he used to farm his, um, his commodity crops and then he'll work in his garden. And in his vegetable garden, half of it would go to the community or the church members and uh, or the members at his church and the rest of the produce would go to mom's table to cook supper. Um, we focus on pain mitigation with the variety of cannabis that we grow here at Brown Family Farms and we're able to alleviate our customers from having to use pharmaceutical prescribed medication. Okay, so when I tried to grow, I tried doing hydroponics, and I was using synthetic nutrients. So you obviously can't do that, or do they have organic synthetic nutrients? Everything is organic. Okay. So if I decided to cut this node here for, for a clone, I know that I'll have one, two, three, four, five clones coming right behind it. It's very important that you are particular about where you cut your clones so that it can regenerate itself. So I'll take a cut here. That's one entire clone. So CalMag, kelp, uh, magnesium, those vital uh, minerals are what keep these plants thriving. Um, the plant tells you everything, everything that is lacking. For example, if you see the red in, in the fan leaves, that means that it needs a magnesium, magnesium application. Is, a, is deficient in magnesium. So we would add that to the irrigation process. Uh, for us, for cannabis, we can grow less than what we normally are accustomed to grow for other crops and still do well in the uh, business aspect of being farmers and ranchers. We incorporate Clayton in our day-to-day. -day. So a typical day for me, when I'm not you know, promoting the farm, I'll spend it going out into our barn, making sure that the nutrients are set out for the day. I'm a strickler, so I make sure that the water is in good condition because the water really makes the difference on how the plant is going to flourish. So these are how I keep the oxygenated, okay. uh, the water oxygenated. And all you have to do is move the surface. Yes. Right? Keep, That's how you oxygenate water. Right. Move the surface and make sure that the pH levels, because it's very important when we irrigate these plants that the pH level is 6.5 uh, neutral. So all of our water is from a natural spring reservoir that we have here on our farm. Six and a half acres of a natural spring reservoir, actually. Uh, we'll take a look at that as we look as we go outside the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. That's basically just the oxygenation uh -huh. for the for the stones. 
Uh, definitely mothering, farming, and working is, is a balancing act. But the matriarch of the Brown family, Mrs. Brown, really, I would attribute a lot of just my thought process to her. I would sit on the back patio with her and we would drink coffee and she would speak about all of her vegetables and fruits that she was growing. And then she also educated me on what her life was like as a farm mom, a farm wife, growing up when they were doing soybean and tobacco. We're looking at a time now where the grocery stores and the farm and the uh, places that we normally get our, our fruits, vegetables, and produce, the prices are increasing. And why is that? When the farmers are getting less than what they earn when they created the products. And it's because of the capitalism. Capitalism is driving products to be more focused on how they look than how they taste. That's just normal information that most growers have. So um, it keeps us just keeps us in line with what we're supposed to do. Sometimes uh, my employees have to water, sometimes I'm, I'm able to water, so it just keeps everybody on the same page because we don't want to uh, not provide the best quality of care for our plants. Because if they're not getting the right pH level, then the plant isn't going to absorb the nutrients. All of our customers benefit from CBD. We have tons of testimonials online of what we have been able to heal people with their issues with their skin, issues with their sleep, anxiety, post-traumatic stress. Uh, we've been able to heal uh, customers with scars with our topical creams to help heal their scars doing types of uh, various surgeries, accidents, and things like that. Um, we have been able and have had history of helping people mitigate their pain. Really? rewarding experience at the end of the day making sure that you know i'm looking at the plants to make sure they're not being sunburned to make sure that pests aren't eating them um, because all that goes into making sure that we're putting out the best product for our consumer as possible no matter when no matter what i have a place to lot of promoting of our product but promoting what it can do and so from young children all the way up to elders they're able to reap the benefits of the hemp of the CBD so I mean CBD has abilities with children that have autism CBD has abilities to relieve aches and pains I know even for myself um, having like a hip injury I applied that and I was like, this, this really works. So a part of what Patrick and I do is, I back my word and so does he. So before we even put anything out, we go through testing too to make sure that whatever that person, that customer is receiving, we would give it to ourselves or our family. All female, that's why we, wanna, that's why we wanted to grow clones because so we know, Correct, and we know what we're gonna get. We don't have to worry about the feminization process and trying to pick males from females and things like that. Last year we did 18 acres of seed germination and it was just like a roller coaster. Now everything, every canopy is even. They're all identical. They're all identical, so cloning is, I would say, more work after the germination process for seeds, but however, you'll get a better reward. So we actually have a, a kind of a sort of a level of knowing how many pounds per acre that we're going to be able to produce this year. So your fertilizer has everything in it already, but like you said, this one might have magnesium deficiency. How would you adjust that? We'll put a organic uh, level of magnesium, um, which is very, very less potent, but our, actually our PPM processes show us exactly how much it needs to be at a certain level to be able to irrigate the plant. Okay. Lafits kill the little small aphids, the little very, very microscopic little yellow bugs. Mm -hmm. 
And what they do is they you'll see little spots on the fan leaves that lets you know that you have an aphid outbreak and you want to try to take care of that as much as possible. So for us, what we do, we go buy live bugs and we put them inside our greenhouse and we just let them go. And then they slowly but surely eat about a thousand to twelve, a thousand to thirteen thousand aphids at a time. Wow. That's what a ladybug can 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 eat. For us, um, for our family here, uh, we understand the scalability of the processes of not just cannabis, but actually food bank shortages throughout the entire world and being able to market our products of growing naturally fresh here to be able to provide to areas of the world that are not able to grow. So these plants here are about, I would say, six weeks. How long does it take a tree to grow to maturity? Oh, a long time. <laughs> like 20, 30 <laughs> 20, years. 20, 30 years, yep. And it's my understanding that these don't leach nutrients out of the soil like traditional plants do too. Provides the best cover nutrients for all farming applications, all farming crops. This produces way more nutrients in the soil than clover does, more than soakum does. Um, any cover crop, this particular process is the best. I had some knowledge of hemp but I had no idea until he became just completely embarked and obsessive about researching it and starting this journey into hemp. Um, I have a, a brother who has a science background. Growing up, he was always an advocate for it. And I just thought, oh, he's, you know, a hippie, you know, but in which a lot of people have that same assumption about hemp and what exactly it is. It really is amazing to watch this plant come alive. It grows so fast that you can literally kind of watch the life cycles happen. Absolutely. And it's, it's just an amazing plant. Um, being able to utilize everything that we have on a farm to create our products. Um, natural spring water, um, soil composition, um, uh, no chemical crops. Um, proper tillage, proper rotation, crop rotation, being able to source where our products come from based on our uh, standard operating procedures of where we purchase our seeds and so forth and so on. Um, those are the things that cause, allows us to continue to be sustainable. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, I call this my, my keepsake where I come and I get you know, just get away from the city sometimes that I, I'm, I'm normally working and um, I get out here and I just take in all the natural substance of nature. Again, even when I share with my family that I was embarking on this journey with Patrick or even his own mother, there was some negative connotation around it until we started to educate them on the different capabilities it had. Once that light bulb went off and they realized that this is modern day farming, at that point, they knew we were on to something. For us, we call 7,250 plants this year. For this particular tent, you can set up 3,200 plants at a time. Okay. 3,200 plants, 7 to 14 days to develop roots. Uh, most cannabis farmers, they use gel stimulant for the roots. We use Clonex, which is very popular. So certified organic is just as similar to the GAP processes. It's just the federal side compared to the state. So the GAP is going to be your local, state, North Carolina Department of Agriculture, and then the certified USDA organic is federally a federal cert. And then the highest level is the CMGAP certification, which is when you get to your pharmaceutical companies that are interested in purchasing some of the products from your farm, you have to meet that certification. For us, certified, being certified is a marketing tool. Marketing tool to be able to create products and also to just be able to differentiate yourself from the other competitive growers. Um, so that's why we want to always obtain our certification and always go by standard operating procedures when creating the plants. The care that we put into from the, from the time that the plant reaches the ground to the time it gets into the consumer's hand. So taking pride in that is, is paramount. So. I think that's why I began to love it. <laughs> oh, don't remind remind me to tell you when Patrick made me fall off the tractor. Oh, oh well, it's a great, it's right. a great segue. <laughs>
temperature uh, checks are our humidity levels, which would be at the top, and then our temperature would be at the bottom. Fans stay on for 24 hours. During this process, I'll go ahead and get rid of the fan leaves and the other nodes that I'm not going to utilize anymore. So I cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut there, there, and there. You have one clone, then you'll clean it up. It's very important that you cut the fan leaves at the same vertical angles. This way, moisture gets into the leaf and it causes the roots to develop. I'm protective over my babies, so when people walk in our greenhouse or walk down the, the field, I'm kind of micromanaging, right? I'm kind of micromanaging from even during the cloning process. You know, we just don't invite everyone to be a part of that because we want to make sure that we can give our word and back that we've taken care of this plant from the time that you know we've grown it to the time it, it actually reaches that customer. What's ideal about Fox Farm, it, it, it automatically has the vital nutrients for the plants throughout the process. This particular Fox Farm we use is called Ocean Forest. Ocean Forest has the crab meal, the earthworm casting, the sea kelp and things that are vital to create their uh, plants during their growth cycle in the morning. So all the, all the clones that are still in the greenhouse are to replace the mothers in case they eventually are getting too old. So how much taller are they get? They'll get as tall as we allow them. <laughs> and you said you're going to push it till next season. So. Try to. I trimmed all these like last week and they've already taken off again. They're growing to the lights. We are going down the fields and Patrick is listening to his music on his tractor and I'm on the back and he takes a sharp right and throws me from off the back of the tractor and keeps driving. Uh -oh. It wasn't until his cousin said, hey, ho, stop. But by then my legs were above my head and I'm tumbling into the dirt. I needed back rubs for two weeks uh, after that. <laughs> right, foot rubs. Like, mm, foot right, right. So, right. So, my dad was born in the house next door. We have four horses. Really? Yeah. So, all the land is here is ours. So, here, these plants were planted July, the second week in July. Um, for us, for me solely, I would say, the benefit of healing and being able to help heal our community is more vital to me than to be able to grow things that are going to make it more profitable for our farm. The appreciation is what keeps us going. Um, it keeps us going every day to know that we've impacted someone's life in a positive way. Uh, we've had customers that have been to the doctor and you know as we know prescription drugs are the number one thing that the doctors push and some people don't want to go down that avenue and so we're giving them an alternative to relieve whatever pain or ailment that they have without it being habit forming. As you can see, these plants are very healthy. This year we did not have to irrigate so far. Um, God has provided us with a lot of rain, which is vital during the uh, second to third phase of the growing cycle. This is what I would call phase two. We don't yet have a flower. Um, we do have pistols that are showing, which would be these beside the nodes. That's where the flower is gonna come. So on each clipping, there is a node. So what is very important is that I cut at a 40 degree angle to be able to dip into the Clonex gel or the root stimulant before I actually put it into the Rockwell cube and stick it into the growth tent for seven to 14 days. So I take a 40 degree angle, right? 45 degree angle, sorry. Right between the bull horns. That way, the root is going to come from that node. Yeah, the, the joys of, of working on a farm. Um, never would I have imagined that I would be digging and playing in dirt and loving it. <laughs> so When we transfer our plants out of the 17 to 14 day cycle and we center them into our solo cup process, we continue to add nutrients to the process using azos and mycos. 
which is what we utilize to develop a much larger, more sturdy plant. Um, when they do smoke it, they have to have some type of benefit of it. It's just the psychological neuroactive effect is just not there, but the healing effect will always be there. Um, some people like to smoke it because it gets to the bloodstream a lot faster than the oil tincture or a rub on topical. So these little guys have become my babies. I never thought I would say that because this little guy right here is my only baby, only thing I've had to be responsible for. But it has been such a true joy watching me develop, watching Patrick develop little bitty seeds, little bitty plants into what would grow to be taller than me or my son. And he's cutting it with a sterilized pair of shears. Yeah, it's very important to sterilize. To make sure that the spears, the spears are sterilized so that it's not potentially spreading virus or bacteria to any other plant. So I would then dip this into the Rockwell cube after I put the gel on it. And then we let, we put it into the grow tent for 7 to 14 days and it creates a root. Growing up on this farm, I, I, I could say the benefits of it were better than the hard work and label of it, uh, labor of it because this is what the outcome is. The outcome is being able to harvest, watching what you grow, and loving how putting things in the dirt and watching them go through various growth cycles and be able to process that and harvest it. That's, that's, the, that's the joy of it at the end of the year. I definitely believe in it because I've seen what it has done for some of our customers and they we get calls and text messages and emails on a daily with them just speaking about the results and that's the best feeling in the world is someone actually coming to you saying thank you. It's got like a billion uses. Yep, one of God's greatest creations, I would say.